wisdom, student enrollment, that's what the class of God students enroll in, supreme wisdom, I study it hard, the study of myself is the study of God, supreme wisdom, write your letter, get your X, supreme wisdom, that's what you'll be getting next, supreme wisdom, some call it the lessons, but I call it life actual facts, no guessing. <laughs> In the name of God, the lips and merciful, uh, I'd like to bear witness that there's no God for the mind of the promised messenger, and I'd like to greet everybody with three words. Peace, I saw like Okay, so here we are at week three of uh, the Making of Devil portion of Foundation class. So, just to recap what we went over so far in this course on the Making of Devil, week um, one. Come give him what Mark said. He's ready. I mean, I told him. Okay. So, uh, week one, just to recap on the first week, we did an introduction and review of the Making of Devil uh, section in the Message to the Black Man that can be found in the Message to the Black Man, page 103 through 122. So, that first week, we actually read, that read the entire section as a class, and then we also answered questions to a little brief assessment on that. And the purpose of doing that that first week and taking that time out that first week was so we can get a foundation of what it is that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, what he said on these topics and not necessarily what someone else said. Yeah. Because, you know, in order to, that's the whole point of having this foundation class because we're trying to sure up or for some of us build a new one, you know, others might need to repair some and, you know, different things of that nature. So we're going back to the foundation is the actual teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which we say are life giving. So we started off with his words first. And then we too, we dealt with Yakub and we dealt with the whole concept that Yakub is the same person that is Jacob from the Bible. And so in that week, we went over um, Yakub more so the part of his life where he was figuring out what it was that he was meant to do. And then we also show the, the uh, juxtapose that to Jacob from the Bible. And we went, for those of us who didn't know the story of Jacob and Esau and Jacob's story through the Bible, we went over that as well. And then we made the comparisons between the two and saw that they, in fact, did line up, right? Because what was the thing about the, the whole story between Jacob and Esau is that his in his mother's womb, there was supposed to be how many people? Two. 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 Two people. And then out of those two people, which really represented two nations, there was going to be one that was older and stronger, and the second was going to be younger and weaker. But it was prophesied that the younger, weaker one would control the older, stronger one, right? And so we broke that down. And so now here we are, week three. So an overview of what we're going to be going over today is the making of devil. And in that, we're actually going to be going over Yaku's grafting process itself. So the first week, we went over the entire, the entire history. Week two, we dealt with Yaku himself. And now week three, we're actually dealing with this grafting process. So I wanted to start off with this first point. So in this section of making the devil, making of devil in Message to the Black Man, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the black man produces these four colors: brown, red, yellow, and white. Can you all see that? Because I uh, I kind of wanted to color code those those uh those words because we're gonna be able to track that. We're gonna be able to track that um these colors in very interesting ways, which we're gonna pop up over and over again, which more so goes back to prove what the message is saying is exactly correct. But I want to know if you all can see that in this PowerPoint, because I know yeah. I can see it on the computer, but I didn't know how to come out. Can you see white? You see that word, yeah. white right there? I didn't, see, I couldn't actually make it white, because if it was white, you couldn't see it, so that's why it's like a dingy color right there. I think it's like silver. Okay, so the message says that the black man produces these four colors, brown, red, yellow, and white. Simple enough? Yeah. But interestingly enough, there was this man named Johann Frederick Blumenbach. Okay? Johann 
Frederick or Friedrich Blumenbach. And this is a white man, okay? And so here, I actually was doing some research on that, that topic itself of human genetics and where do people come from? And I came across this man. So I, I can't really see from that man's point. I know his name is Ezra Humanity, yes. but I can't see. Huh? <laughs> Move on. Okay. So here it reads, this is, and this is an excerpt from a website that I got that I was doing research on, where it actually explains the work that this man, uh, Johann Blumenbach, did. So it says, expanding on the work of Carlos Linnaeus, German professor of medicine, Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, introduced the race-based classification in on the natural variety of mankind. That's the name, this right here, on the natural variety of mankind is actually the name or the title of the book that he wrote on this topic of race classification. And so it says, in the second edition, Blumenbach, Blumenbach changed his original geographically based four race arrangement to a five group, one that emphasized physical morphology. Morphology is just a fancy word, means like, like the form of a thing. So he went from classifying different peoples by the regions that they live in to actually classifying the different races of people by their actual physical makeup. And so Blumenbach's five categories were Caucasian, which is the white race. What color was that? We said Caucasian was the white race. And it says that Mongolian is the yellow race. Interestingly enough, he said that the Malayan was the brown race and that the Ethiopian was the black race and the American was the red race. And so in modern terms, because this, this man lived like in the 1700s, so in the modern terms, he is saying that Caucasians are white people, right? Yeah. He's saying yellow people are Mongolians. Oh, this is what we would call Asians, specifically yeah. more in the Far East with you know the Chinese and things like that. Then it says the brown race is the Malayan race. And Malayan has to do with the, like the, the uh, country of Malaysia. It has to do with the kind of South, I believe, Southeast Asia. It's yeah. more in the Southern part of Asia where people are more island. They're, they're, they have Asian features, but they also have features that are close to black people and they live on islands. And these are called the Malayan people. And that's the brown race. And it says that the Ethiopian is the black race. Where is Ethiopia located? Yeah. Africa. Africa. And it says that the American is the red race, right? And in this sense, they're talking about the American Indian, even though we know that's, a, that's an oxymoron, but the American Indian, or what we call the Native American. And so if we remember back when we were reading in the first week, what did the messenger say about these people, these Americans or this red race? Who did he say that their red race was? They were the people that lived down from the Indian. Right, and he said, what, did, what was the name that he said they were called? Mm -hmm. They were called Indians, but he gave them a color. He called them the Red Indians. So here is this white man saying that, according to his research scientifically, that there are five races, which is Caucasian white, Mongolian yellow, Malayan brown, Ethiopian black, and American, or what we call Native American, which is the red race. And so right here is actually pictures of the different skulls of these different types of people. Because this man, Blumenbach, was an anthropologist. And anthropologists, they study the history of man, but I believe they study the history of man and the different genetics of man by looking at the skeletal remains of people. And so when they looked at the skeletons of these different, these five races of people, they said they all had a distinct kind of physical build. And here are the skulls of the different people with their different colors. So here we have the American, which is the red, and this is the, this is the American skull. This is the Ethiopian skull, which is black, the Malayan, which is brown, the Mongolian, which is yellow, and the Caucasian, which is white. So Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, Blumenbach, who lived from 1752 to 1840, was a prominent German anatomist and early anthropologist who played a major role in elevating science beyond racial prejudice and towards scientific objectivity. So what they say, and this man, uh, Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, is considered by many the father of modern anthropology. So he's a big deal to them. And this is what he's saying 
bearing witness to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then he didn't even bear witness before the Messenger was even born. So look at that. Even, even more uh, proof. But it says that his dissertation on the unity of mankind, which was in 1795, still recognized for its quality and sound scientific approach to the study of human variation, is considered the starting point of anthropology. His on the unity of mankind is still seen as a very objective and scientifically sound approach to studying the human animal while avoiding the use of subjective behavior characteristics and cultural biases. So what they're saying is that this man came up with this, this theory or he came up with this, this category not based on racial prejudice, but by sound science and mathematics. So the messenger, but the messenger said that he got it from God. Hmm. No. So think on that. And so the, what he's saying is this is not prejudice, this is not how I feel about it, this is what it is. And that there are five races. So he said, while well, Blumenblatt incorporated basic differences in skin pigmentation and hair color in his study, he also relied heavily on facial features, shape of teeth, and skull morphology to identify five human races consisting of Caucasian, Malaysian, Ethiopian, American, and Mongolian. So it's not just cultural biases. He's saying if you look at the skin of these different people, there's five distinct groups. If you look at the skeletons of these different people, there's five. You can look at their hair. There are many different physical variations between these people, and he used that to categorize them into these five groups. So moving further, in the message to the black man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he learned from studying, and this is talking about Yaku. So we went from the point that the messenger said that the black man produces the four colors, which are brown, red, yellow, and white. And now moving on, we're getting closer to this grafting process. So this is the messenger talking about the grafting process, Yaku's grafting process. So he said that he learned from studying the germ of the black man under the microscope that there were two people in him and that one was black and the other brown. He said he could successfully separate one from the other, he could graph the brown into his last stage, which would be white. And this is the messenger saying that Yaku, before he began this grafting process, he found something inside of the black man. And what he found was two different germs. And by through a process of what, what, what was this verb used that he could successfully what? Separate. Separate the two. He can graph the brown into his last stage, which would be white. Now, on that point, just from a very plain definition of these colors, I found something even interesting in that. So when we're dealing with colors, the first color that the messenger said that was in the black man was what? He said inside the black man was a black germ. Yeah. And so when you're dealing with colors, black is the achromatic color of least lightness characteristically perceived to belong to objects that neither reflect nor transmit light. The color of cold, the opposite of white. So black is the opposite of what? White. And interestingly enough, last week when we were dealing with Yaku's grafting process, we dealt with the fact that Yaku was playing with two pieces of steel, and we learned that steel was an alloy between coal, or well not coal, but carbon, which is black, and silver, not silver, coal and uh, carbon and iron. And iron appears to be white, and carbon appears to be black. And so coal is just carbon. And so it says the opposite color of this color black is white. And this is just dealing with colors. And then also interestingly enough, this part is saying that where it says that light is neither reflected nor transmitted, that means that the light, when it comes in contact with black, it gets absorbed. Mm -hmm. So black is the color that absorbs all light. So just because it's not reflecting and transmitting, it's actually being absorbed, so it's actually taking on the energy of light. And now, Yaku said he saw another germ, and he said that germ was brown. brown. Now look at this definition. I found this interesting. That's, that one's really the one that blew my mind. And this is just a definition of brown. It says brown is any other group of colors between red and yellow. Yeah. And then it says, in hue of medium or low lightness and of moderate to low saturation. 
So brown is any color between what two colors? Red and yellow. So inside of brown, there is red and yellow. Interestingly enough, the black man had two germs in him, one black, one brown. And when you're talking about brown, you're also including what two colors? Red, red, red. and yellow. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. And now white. Like I said, I've color coded a lot of these words for dramatic effect because this is going to play through this whole process. But right here, it says white is the achromatic object color of greatest lightness, characteristically perceived to belong to objects that reflect diffusely nearly all incident energy through the physical spectrum, the color of fresh snow, the opposite of black. So when we're just dealing with a color basis, black is the opposite of white, white is the opposite of black, and brown is the group of color between red and yellow. And again, what this is saying scientifically, scientifically is that white reflects all energy. It doesn't absorb any energy. Black absorbs energy, so that way it's not able to throw off energy. And white throws off all its energy and doesn't absorb energy, okay? So white, if you think about it from an energy perspective, is the weakest color. And black is the strongest color. Supreme wisdom, some call it the lessons, but I call it life actual facts, no guessing.